Okay, hello everyone. So my name is Zoltan and I work for uh, Idemsoft company. Uh, so in the next 20 minutes, I will uh, uh, introduce and I will present how we use observability and AI in uh, air government ecosystem. So a few words about us. So Idemsoft is an indirect state-owned company. We are playing a role in development, integration, installation and operating IT systems in a national significance. So our users are the citizens, so we are providing them services. Uh, we have the client gate with more than uh, 3,000 um, uh, government cases. Uh, uh, we have an electronic customer service portal with more than 5 million users and uh, about 4 million electronic personal identification. And we also provide services uh, to the uh, local government. And uh, in addition to that, we have the national data assessed, uh, uh, which uh, uh, consists of seven registers for supports, administrative records, and related uh, procedures. And uh, annually, we also uh, support uh, elections, uh, votes in a uh, national level. And also, we have uh, developed a uh, central, uh, central governmental service bus called KKSB for data interoperability. So we have uh, uh, more than 200, uh, 200 uh, connected organizations and uh, in average uh, 60 million requests per month. Uh, for the development, we have a public application development environment for uh, unifying the development in the public administration and for that we have the uh, public application uh, catalog for information about uh, uh, the development. Uh, so, but why we need uh uh, an efficient opera operations. Uh, as you may realize, we have uh, uh, a lot of services and taking into account the age and the type of the technology, we have uh, very old uh, uh, systems and we have the cloud native applications as well. So our goal is to uh, make uh, the operation efficient, uh, make uh, uh, the faster and more uh, efficient the error hand handling, uh, increase the availability and reliability of the services, and then uh, we want to benefit uh, for the service operation uh, by reducing the number of incidents, and in the end also we want to help uh, uh, the work of the application uh, uh, development. But um, how? So we want to use, uh, we are using open source as we can. Uh, so uh, the important is there is no uh, license limitation, uh, no additional cost. It has a fast uh, development uh, uh, cycle and uh, it, there is a wide uh, user community. But there is a trade-off as well. There are disadvantages, which means there is no customized support. Uh, public code based in higher cases can be a problem and leak of the documentation and also the qualities of the documentation is depending on the open source uh, uh, solution and how we can improve the observ observability. So we use anomaly detection and other methods like road cause analysis and APM, analyzing the APM data, forecasting service map. So uh, we are in the observability session, but I would like to somehow uh, define what it is. So the notion of the observability was introduced by a Hungarian-American engineer called Rudolf Kalman in uh, 1960 in the paper on the general theory of uh, control system for controlling li li linear dynamics uh, uh, system. So in uh, software environment, so in the distributed system, observability is the availability to collect data about program executions, internal states of the module, and the communication bet between uh, components. So if you uh, check the Wikipedia, there are a lot of definition, but uh, I would say the now definition is just how we understand what's happening in our system. So uh, we introduced observability because the monitoring is not enough in a complex heterogeneous uh, uh, computing uh, um, uh, environment, and uh, in addition, uh, we uh, uh, started to use AIOps uh, machine learning uh, 
techniques as well. Uh, but how we uh, process uh, the data? So we have to challenge. Uh, there are a lot of uh, product, products and a lot of microservices, and uh, we need a unified uh, uh, monitoring data structure in, in order to analyze that data. And uh, we have uh, also different data sources. Um, so uh, we are uh, connecting data from uh, legacy system and uh, uh, the cloud-based uh, 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 Kubernetes-based platforms, and uh, we also uh, will uh, collect data from mobile and uh, web uh, applications. So after that, we process the data and uh, uh, we store the data in a central uh, place, and then analyze and visualize that data. So in the picture uh, right side, you can see uh, the, the, how the production uh, system is built. So as uh, we, uh, uh, so we, we are collecting data, uh, uh, the traces and matrices, matrices with open telemetry, uh, and uh, we use open uh, telemetry collector and data prepare uh, uh, to process the data and open search uh, to store the data. So for the logs, we are using uh, Fluendi and uh, Logstash for uh, transforming, uh, uh, parsing the logs and storing in uh, uh, open search as well. Grafana, open search dashboard for the visualization and uh, Jupyter Labs uh, for uh, analysis. So th this is only for application monitoring, but we are using uh, 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 Prometheus, uh, Nagios, Itzinga for other type of uh, monitoring. Uh, such, as, uh, such as uh, infrastructure monitoring. So uh, uh, for the data uh, in the ingestion and processing, so we are using open telemetry for metrics and traces, as I mentioned before. Uh, as you already may know that it's, it is a collection of tools, APIs, and SDKs for analyzing software performance and behavior. So why we uh, uh, decided to use open telemetry? So we decided to use open telemetry because it's a vendor agnostic. The same agent can collect telemetry uh, data, which means uh, our data pipelines is much, much simplified. And uh, there are various uh, receiver, processor, and exporters. And uh, also, uh, uh, there are also possible to uh, use a processor for uh, cost optimization to reduce the uh, uh, number of uh, data stored in uh, uh, storage. For um, instrumentation, we are using um, auto instrumentation where we can, but uh, sometimes that doesn't work, for example, in the Node.js uh, cases. Uh, and then uh, uh, currently we have uh, uh, the agent uh, instrumented uh, using Helm, but we are moving to the open telemetry Kubernetes operator. And uh, uh, the second part is uh, uh, collecting logs. So we are using Fluendi, uh, for, uh, which is a cross-platform log collector, collecting uh, application logs and uh, the system logs uh, as well, where the Kubernetes is running. Uh, for um, uh, the Kubernetes, we, uh, we will move to Fluendi, and we keep Fluendi in the legacy system for collecting logs. So for uh, um, the data processing, uh, we use the collector for uh, uh, process the metrics and traces, and uh, data prepare uh, uh, for uh, processing open telemetry data and inserting to the open search. And uh, for uh, the data storage and analysis, uh, so we are using open search, which is a real-time distributed uh, search engine, which performs very well in tertiary data. And uh, one of the good things you can store uh, uh, logs, traces, matrices in a single uh, backend, and it has a lot of functionalities like uh, trace analytics for visualizing open telemetry data, event analytics, which pro provide SQL, uh, uh, PPL, DSL uh, query languages and it supports Prometheus uh, as well, and there is also security analytics plugin uh, for SIM um, uh, uh, functions, and there is machine learning, uh, built-in machine learning plugin as well. In the 
figure uh, uh, you can see uh, analyzing the event analytics uh, panel, analyzing a specific uh, um, error message. Uh, in that uh, um, figure, you can see a trace with well span and the trace analytics uh, um, dashboard. As I mentioned before, we are using Grafana uh, and uh, uh, Open Search dashboard for data visualization and for the application uh, uh, alerting. We are using the built-in uh, um, Open Search alerting plugin, and we group together the same, uh, same, same type of uh, error messages, and we send to a dedicated uh, email. Uh, address. Uh, and now I will uh, uh, talk about how we use uh, machine learning uh, uh, algorithms to analyzing the data. So we have developed OpenPandas data frame based analysis and manipulation uh, uh, framework uh, for analyzing uh, data stored in open source. Uh, it's highly domain specific knowledge of uh, open source. So it uh, provides data exploration, data transformation, and visualization, and it can be integrated in any uh, Python-based analytics uh, platforms at scale. Uh, you can see in the screenshot uh, a very simple example of how you can use uh, uh, um, uh, open pandas, and uh, then we use uh, open pandas for analyzing the data. And now uh, let's uh, talk about uh, anomaly detection. But before, uh, uh, what is the anomaly? It's an ab abnormal situation, an uh, unexpected event. But you may know it's uh, not easy to decide what is the normal and what is the abnormal. You need a lot of information. Uh, if you uh, look at, uh, at the picture, you can see a plane landed in a, on a highway. So it certainly it's not a normal uh, uh, situation. Uh, the anomaly have different types. There is a point anomaly, uh, so let's say we have 10 cars and one uh, uh, plane, so it means something wrong, so we can see an uh, anomaly. And uh, the point anomaly is very simple uh, to detect because you have, uh, 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 let's say, uh, a data point and it differs to the other. And the contextual uh, anomaly, you need the context, like in the figure, you, you have to see the cars and you have to see the environment. Uh, is going on. And then the collective anomaly, uh, so if uh, all flights are cancelled in the same region, and uh, if you have data only from one uh, a plane uh, or two, uh, you don't know it is an anomaly. You, you need all the information uh, uh, to decide this is an anomaly. So there are a lot of algorithms. They are uh, machine learning algorithms. Uh, I call the uh, classical uh, uh, or statistical based algorithm, like KNN, PCA, and neural network based um, algorithm. We compare the, the classical and the neural uh, uh, networks. Uh, uh, um, uh, performances. Uh, so, um, as you can see in the uh, right uh, figure, uh, uh, the neural network's uh, learning time is much, much higher than the um, uh, other the, uh, classical uh, algorithm, but, but uh, the accuracy is, uh, uh, of the uh, neural network uh, is much, much better than compared to the classical um, algorithm. Uh, so we have developed a convolutional autoencoder. Uh, co uh, it's a neural network. You can see the ar architecture of the, uh, the uh, autoencoder in the bottom of the slide. So our case is we have the input a time series, and then the encoder uh, transform the uh, time series into a meaningful latent space uh, Z, and then uh, the decoder reconstruct uh, uh, this uh, compressed uh, uh, representation of the uh, time series through the minimization of the uh, cost uh, function. Uh, the convolutional um, autoencoder, it's encode input data by splitting the data into the subsection and then converting this subsection into simple signal that are summed together to create new representation of the data. 
So uh, here a very simple example um, about uh, anomaly detection. So we use uh, this convolutional uh, uh, autoencoder. Uh, uh, we train as an unsupervised way because there are a lot of data points and it's not easy to, uh, uh, to annotate all the data points. So then we decided to uh, train uh, the neural network di different patterns. And then when it's needed, we, uh, uh, then we uh, go to a supervised Way. So in the uh, figure, uh, you can see there is a, a sudden increase of uh, request, uh, which uh, start with this 200. And then we, this pattern was didn't show to the uh, um, network. And then it means uh, it was not able to reconstruct uh, uh, that uh, time series. You can see uh, there is uh, the sudden increase happened. Um, then uh, the uh, the reconstruction loss of uh, this time series is higher than a certain level, in our case is uh, one. But what happens if uh, some organization one year want to get some data, some information in our system, so it's not an anomaly, then we have to say, okay, uh, somehow next time, if next year this happened again, uh, it should not uh, 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 again uh, anomaly. So then we use Grafana and we label the data. So the zero means we don't know about uh, the time uh, region, it's anomaly or uh, no, we don't know nothing about that region. We say minus, minus one where it's not anomaly and one the region that, that is the anomaly. And after continued training, you can see in the last um, uh, plot, uh, um, the, uh, the region where it was above uh, the red line, it's now above and uh, almost the same uh, as the other data. It means there is no anomaly. And in uh, summary, uh, so monitoring is uh, not enough, uh, so observability in a heterogeneous uh, computing environment is a must. Uh, open telemetry is uh, uh, very good to unif unify the data pipeline and uh, process uh, uh, data. Observability can be improved using uh, uh, AI, AI ops, especially anomaly detection. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a complex environment. So in the end, I would like to thank uh, to, to Pazma and Peter Catholic University for the um, collaboration and the support of the Hungarian National Laboratory, and thank you also for the attention. Thank you again, Zoltan. Um, any questions? Just raise your hand if you have any questions. Oh, yeah, okay. So every time you have a new kind of anomaly, you have to do a new supervised training and label it, and then, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, and then you also have to hope that whatever you label as an anomaly is also strong enough for the next time that, that it comes up. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, every time, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, yeah. It's required because there, are, there is a lot of uh, uh, data point. We cannot start with someone to label the, what is the normal. So we start with the unsupervised, and then we move to next. Uh. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, go for it. So do you have this pipeline running continuously all day long, or do you just sometimes execute it? So, uh, could you please? Uh, the, so, uh, cannot hear very well. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, do you have this pipeline running continuously uh, all day long, or do you just sometimes run that to see, hey, we're in the last week, did we have any anomalies? Like, is this no, it's uh, offline, offline. Okay. It's not yet, but we, we are planning to put it uh, uh, to, to the pipeline uh, there to, yeah, to not manual. Uh. Cool. Okay. That's good. Cool. Um, anyone else? In that case, thank you, Zoltan. Um, okay. Yeah, we will meet again in six minutes for the next talk. Thank you.